So that's about uh, metamer. Let's solve a problem. If you have been asked to draw metamer of suppose if you have been asked to draw a uh, metamer of uh, uh, one methoxy toluene then how would you draw the metamer of this one of the obvious thing you have, what you have to do is you have to change the distribution of the carbon on both side of that oxygen atom here so you have one you bring it here two so you make it as c2h5 so this methyl effectively has gone to this carbon so this methyl will not appear on the phenyl ring so this is one of the metamer possible for this there will be others possible if you if you have this methyl at ortho position with respect to this methoxy if you change this to meta then the alkyl group changes altogether. Then that will also be a metamer. If you change it to para, then the alkyl group again changes altogether. Then that will also be a metamer. So you'll have two more metamers just by changing the position of this methyl. And if you bring this methyl to this carbon, you'll again have a metamer. Fine. Right? Okay then. Uh, that's about metamerism. Okay, uh, so let's move on. Let's move to the fifth kind of uh, structural isomerism. They call it as tautomerism. Now, you'll find uh, a full fledged lecture on tautomerism on YouTube. Uh, you just have to type tautomerism collegepedia and you'll get that where we have discussed this tautomerism in great detail so i'm not going to bring the whole discussion up here once again tautomerism as such is a very very important concept and most of the reactions many of them requ require uses this concept actually tautomerism occurs in most of the reaction mechanism so to understand the reaction mechanism of most of the reactions in organic chemistry we have to know this so as such, this is very, very important. So we have already lectures available on tautomerism. So anyway, you have to go and study them. And uh, once, you, once you start to study reaction mechanism. So here we'll just have a brief introduction. Because we are studying tautomerism, as such, it's because we are studying isomerism. And as such, it is not a kind of, re this is not isomerism in a real sense, but in books they mention it in isomerism and they call it as dynamic isomers. Let's see what happens and why they call it as dynamic isomers. First of all, it is dynamic because you cannot isolate them. They will be changing back and forth from one form to another. First of all, they are isomers. How? Because the molecular formula are same, functional group are different, there's a pi bond here between carbon and carbon. There's no carbon carbon pi bond. There's an alcoholic group. This is an aldehyde group. Their properties are bound to be different. And their molecular formula are same. So they are isomers. So they can be called as isomers. But they are not static in a sense that you cannot isolate them. Because this molecule at one moment is in the enolic form. Next moment it can convert back to aldehydic form. This molecule is an aldehydic form. It can change to enolic form. They are, they are changing. So you cannot say this molecule is aldehyde. Because if it is aldehyde, it will change to enol, come back to aldehyde. So as such, it is in a dynamic state. So that's why, but still, they call it as dynamic isomerism. So, uh, now this is alkene. This, this is, this double bond is between carbon and carbon, which is alkene group. So this alkene and there's the alcoholic group. There's a OH here. So there's a alcoholic group. Alkene and alcohol. They call it as en and all. En from here and ol from here. They call it as enol form. So this is aldehydic form and this is enolic form. This is this functional group which has this kind of alkene and the carbon participating in formation of pi bond also have a OH group. This kind of functional group is enol. 
so they are converting from one form to another now the mechanism how it occurs uh, uh, i'll show you very quickly but the problem is if you haven't studied resonance then there will be trouble in understanding the mechanism so do one thing if you have studied resonance then follow it if you have not studied resonance then never mind if you don't understand the mechanism this 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 thing that uh, you will understand in your future what happens is you take a base and when you take a base base abstracts hydrogen if you add a base here then this base is going to abstract a hydrogen from this carbon and this carbon is going to get a negative charge then this negative charge is going to come on oxygen via resonance there's something called resonance what happens is you know look negative charge means completely filled orbital and positive charge means completely empty orbital for making a pi bond you require a completely filled orbital if you have a situation like this completely filled orbital it gets into completely empty orbital then the electronic density from this completely filled orbital gets into completely empty orbital and both of them now have some electronic density half half one electron one electron that's how a bond is formed right c dot cl dot they come with one one they form share form a bond so this electron ha this orbital has two electrons so if one is being transferred to this now both will have one one because this was empty and then there will be a bond effectively what i'm saying is if you get a plus charge empty orbital adjacent to minus charge completely filled orbital then there will be a formation of a bond like this there's a negative charge completely filled orbital bring a positive charge adjacent to it then there will be a bond formation how can you bring a positive charge on this carbon by taking away the electron of this carbon and putting in the orbital of this oxygen if you do that then the oxygen will get a negative charge because the sum of the electronic density from the all the electronic density from this pi bond is going into the orbital of oxygen now this pi bond had two electron one of was of oxygen one of was one of it of, was of carbon now that two the one which was of carbon that two has gone into the orbital of oxygen so it has one extra electron which whose charge will not be balanced by the protons in the nucleus because the number of electron has increased because it has come from it has came from outer source so that's why o minus what happened here this becomes c plus because of o minus this because it has this this becomes o minus because it has got the electron of c and because c has given the electron so it will become c plus c plus c minus bond now this base which has abstracted hydrogen will become h2o h plus and oh minus and at this position it will come back and with all dignity and respect will give back the hydrogen back to oxygen and that will give you the enol same as this